I don't know if I'd actually be in this country under these rules. Would you, with your parents? This isn't about my background or my parents. What is my... interesting, would you have qualified? Would your parents, I understand, came from Uganda and then were very successful in setting up news agents? They wouldn't have qualified, would they? But it's quite interesting, isn't it? I wouldn't be sitting in my studio and you wouldn't be Home Secretary one of the biggest offices in the land under your system. I have to say to the Home Secretary, why does it always take being hauled into the House of Commons to make basic changes to help vulnerable people who are fleeing from the Ukraine? A maternity hospital was bombed yesterday. An attack on newborn babies and women giving birth. People are fleeing for their lives. And up to now, the response from the Home Office has been total, a total disgrace, yeah, bringing yeah, shame upon right. our country. Our country is better than this. Yeah. If she can't get this sorted out, frankly, she should hand the job over to somebody else who yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. Home Secretary. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, as ever, um, I am delighted to be in the chamber, and in fact, Mr. Speaker, as you know, we were pla we were intended to give a statement this morning. So far from the um, opposition bench's comments, she should have some perspective to all of this, Mr. Speaker. Um, I think, Mr. Speaker, if I if I may just respond to some of the points that the um, that the party, the opposition party, have made. Of course, it is the job of opposition just to attack the government rather than finding collective solutions. Um, no, actually, to rather than support the approach that the government is taking. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Yes! And I think it is really important, Mr Speaker, to remember again that, yes, we have known this attack has been coming, but we have to work with the intelligence and security agencies. And no disrespect to the Honourable Lady, these checks and data, biographical and warnings index, that is important security checks that can be done through this digital process. They have been verified by the intelligence and security um, services, and we have to work with them in particular. So rather than have misinformation, about VAC appointments that originated from the opposition party, that we should stick with the factual information about the scheme. By my estimations and the last information I received, the Poland already have more than 1.2 million people. Hungary 190,000, Slovakia 128,000, small Moldova 83,000 Ukrainians, Romania 79, other European nations uh, 200 plus thousand people already there crossed. Are you able to give us any update about what's happening to Ukrainians who've made that journey across to northern France? Visa centers is the, with the issue we had to sit with you a long, long, long time ago, even before the war. You used to produce visas in Ukraine in Kyiv, which allowed all Ukrainians to get, but that's biggest by territory nation in Europe. So even traveling to one particular place was hassle already. Then you moved to, to Poland years ago. Uh, it was much more difficult to get to Poland. Then you moved it all the way to, to these islands. You know, to, to, you know, to process visas, it was always bureaucratic hassles. I have to tell you that even when I, I was coming here as ambassador, I got my visa on time, although I was already like approved by your government half a year, my wife didn't have it. So we, even simple things like that and bureauc bureaucracy is so tough. But I understand that the Warsaw Center is closing at 5 p.m and at weekends. Could she possibly do something to extend opening hours? Exactly. No, my honourable friend has made a very, very important point. This is because of labour laws in Poland, and there have been extensive discussions via government, foreign office, home office, in terms of getting the extensions. We would love them to be working much longer hours. Believe you me, we've been pursuing this, including the weekends. As I've said, every country and region has a different response and different laws that we have to respect and work with, and we are absolutely doing everything we possibly can to get those extensions. And will she apologise to many of my constituents who have Ukrainian relatives 
whose suffering has been exacerbated by her department's inaction. Okay, if I may, first of all, um, to correct the Honourable Lady, since I've become Home Secretary, we've welcomed to the United Kingdom 20,000 Afghanistan yeah. refugees and 97,000 Hong Kongers. O over the last two years, if I may say, and these numbers are completely unprecedented, and I'll take no lectures from her um, about heartlessness. Particularly, Mr Speaker, in light of the uh, lack of take-up of the dispersal scheme for those people that need housing um, that come to the United Kingdom. So, you know, for those fleeing persecution, I, I would absolutely say that she and her government need to look at themselves. I was shocked to hear the Labour front bench imply that they would throw away or downplay essential security checks in their mad dash to be seen to be doing something. I know our Home Secretary will stand. Oh, 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 oh. I think we need to check the Hansard after. It's not quite how I remember it, to be quite honest. And I don't want to get into a slanging match. We need to be correct on the information that we challenge. So please, I think afterwards, if we were to check it, it might be a much easier way. But you pull if you want to. I'm grateful, Mr. If I got that wrong, I, I do apologise to the Shadow Home Secretary if I did get that incorrect. The Marble friend is absolutely right um, in everything that he said. Um, there's no question about that oh. whatsoever. Um, with, uh... Point forward relating to this. Point forward. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Member for North East Bedfordshire suggested that the opposition front bench had said we should throw away security checks. That has never been the case, and on that basis I do accept the apology that he put forward if he confirms that apology is in place.